Have you been looking for a new stream of income for your art business? Well, today I'm going to be telling you my personal opinion as a service pattern designer and illustrator after six months of being on Fiverr. So a little bit about Fiverr, it's actually a marketplace that's been around for 11 years. So people from all over the world know it. At the very beginning, as kind of the name would suggest, it was marketed as a place that you can find $5 work, just very quick, kind of cheap work if you just needed it quickly and with a very good profit margin. As the name would probably suggest, at the beginning it was marketed as a place to find quick and easy and cheap work. So if you needed any kind of copyright, any kind of very cheap illustrations, maybe um, if you remember early 2010 YouTube, all of the graphics, that a lot of them were doing it on Fiverr. Now they're trying to market themselves to be more like an Upwork where you find high-end, high-quality work for good prices. A lot of the time they do not want their sellers to put any work up that's actually $5. They want it to be a place and a marketplace that people will come to knowing they will get high-quality work for a good price, but not maybe as cheap as $5. This video is going to be all about a service pattern designer or an illustrator thinking about wanting to start on Fiverr. Since those are the only two things I've ever done on Fiverr, it's really the only thing that I can speak on. So in this video, it's going to be all about researching gigs on Fiverr for whatever certain niche that you want to get into, and also making your first gig, as well as I'm going to talk about one of my orders, how I started getting orders, and just the process that I took go from zero sales to over 200 after six months. Okay, so first things first, this is the front page of Fiverr. This is before you would sign in or anything like that. Um, basically, it's just them with a bunch of, maybe these are actors or oh, they're designers. Um, here, it kind of tells you their popular professional services. So logo design, WordPress voiceovers video explainer, social media, things like that. Um, here gives people kind of a glance at what they would be getting. Um, here is just the exploring of all the marketplaces. For This is mainly all for buyers. It's not really for you. If you're looking at this, you most likely have an idea of what you want to do already. So we're going to use the search bar. Um, since I, like I said, I'm a surf pattern designer and illustrator. The thing that I have found success with is my pattern design, so if that is what you are looking for, really you can type in anything, whatever job you want to do. For this, I'm going to just use pattern design because I kind of already do this. Um, I like using the drop down because this is suggested of what people are actually typing in, so pattern textile design and seamless pattern design. If you're in the industry, you know they're the same thing, but as a buyer, some people don't really know. Um, so I'm going to click surface, uh, seamless pattern design, just see what's going on. Uh, this is really good. There's less than 5,000 services. So it means that there's enough competition that people are making gigs and they're, clearly they're making money off of it, but it's not so oversaturated like maybe video editing. Yeah, that has... 36,000 requests. So if you, what you're looking for is something like video editing that has tens of thousands of services available, niching down would definitely help. So maybe video editing YouTube videos or video editing music, uh, podcasts, things like that. Niching down your gig would be super helpful. As far as a seamless pattern design, we're quite lucky. There's just enough to know that money can be made doing this, but it's not so oversaturated that you need to niche down. This is pretty niche down already. So take a look at, I like just looking for the first page. It just gives you an idea. Um, you want to make a thumbnail that's eye-catching, yet not something that looks like everyone else. So for me, seeing stuff like this and this, Yes, it's eye-catching, but also I, the entire, like almost entire first row and almost the entire second row is nothing but that style. 
So maybe doing something similar, but not like that. It helps you stand out. Um, seeing a lot of mock-ups. <laughs> this is funny. This is me. Um, I'm going to talk about this later, but having your photo is something that I had learned is helpful. It makes people kind of connect with you more. And let's see, so this is the first page. I can tell these down here, they're not, they don't even have reviews. So it's not really something you want to look at. Clearly when you start, you're going to be in the same situation. But looking at people, especially people who are on like this first row, second row, and third row, because they are getting their products pushed out by Fiverr, which means they're actually getting sales. People are looking and clicking and most importantly, buying their gigs. So being able to see this, look and see what they're doing, how you can not copy, definitely don't copy, but you can see what they're doing and then make it work for you. This is really cool. It's a Fiverr choice recommendation. That means Fiverr is pushing out their gig and recommending it to as many people and putting their kind of like stamp of approval. Um, as you can see, some people are like a level one, level two seller. Some people aren't leveled at all. Fiverr does have a tiered system. So once you reach a certain level, you'll go from someone who's not ranked to a level one, level two, three, four, and so on until you're like a star seller, you're a pro, and you're considered like the best of the best, the highest quality. So you can see here, you can just click pro services, uh, local sellers, and online sellers. That's mainly for buyers, but it is good to know that if you can think like a buyer, then you can know ways of being able to get in front of them and get them to click and buy your gigs. So I'm going to scroll down and just click mine. That way I'm not impeding on anybody else's um, work. So this is my gig. I will make a seamless pattern design. This is my most popular gig by far. It's the one I've gotten the most um, purchases and orders from. So how Fiverr works is this is a gig. It is just if you have an Etsy or you've ever bought a product, it is basically this is the digital product that you are offering. For whatever reason, Fiverr calls it a gig. Um, Fiverr uses a tiered system, so you get basic, standard, and premium. So my basic, <coughs> my basic is just very, very basic stuff. So I wonder, yeah, there we go. So I like doing images. People just, they look at images first. They don't really read very much. So putting as much information as you can without overwhelming them in the images is super helpful. So I like showing what a basic pattern would look like, what a standard and what a premium pattern would look like. And it helps them kind of get an idea. So this would be my basic pattern. It's just very simple. One pattern, one element, which just means it's one item. And then a source file. Source files are the Adobe file that you made the pattern with, something like that. That's your source file. Then I have a standard pattern. And that will be three elements. So I did three different strawberries. And then premium. It means that's your best pattern that you can offer. So it's five elements. Um, unlimited reviews. Five day delivery. All of those things. Uh, you come down here. You're going to write out just a little bit about you. Explain to them that you are a professional and maybe how many years of experience you have, um, if you have any kind of work history, if you can put that in there, just to give yourself a little bit more a credit, especially when you're starting out. People have to trust that when they give you their money, it's going to come out with a good product. Um, I explained what the buyer will be getting. So I'll get a vector pattern, professional quality. Um, they're allowed to have commercial use. I make the pattern, but I do not own the rights because they paid for it. Um, it's JPEG, PNG, and AI file. Some manufacturers need an AI file to be able to get the Pantone colors and all of that. Others need maybe a PNG or a JPEG, and they just use their own software to make it a repeating pattern. 
Um, the types of patterns I do, there are so many patterns out there. So kind of explaining, hey, I'm good at all of these things. Maybe what you're looking for is on this list. And it also makes the buyer understand like, oh, she can do more than just what I saw in the photos. Um, this is always important. If you have any questions, please feel free to message me. Getting your buyer to message you before they buy is so important it helps so much because you are graded on if you respond quickly, if you have any canceled orders, uh, your review, like how they review you, all of these things. You're graded on all of that and that affects how you rank in Fiverr search. So getting the buyer to message you first so you can talk back and forth so you don't have an order come in that you're like I can't do this this is not in my realm of like abilities this way you can already tell them hey yes go ahead order it or no right now I can't take any or this is not really going to work right now something along those lines so it doesn't affect you and also they're not disappointed by getting a canceled order um, down here you would just see like about yourself so the buyer can Read where you're from, your average response time, delivery, and how long you've been a member. Uh, this is also just like your little bio. Now this is the tiered breakdown. So if they don't want to flip through all these, they want to see them all side by side, you can see it here. Fiverr will recommend other sellers. I'm not thrilled about that, but I also get their marketplace just like Etsy. They're going to show people other people's work. And they just want the buyer to get a sale that they like. Um, FAQs are super helpful. Maybe getting some ideas. Maybe talking to people who are in your life that are not in this industry that you want to make a gig for. Just basic questions that they, other people that are not in the industry may have. So for me, it'd be what's a vector pattern? If you're not in the industry, you probably have never even heard of a vector pattern. You could be thinking that it's something random, that it's not... It has, it's this certain thing. So explaining what that is is super helpful. What are objects? Um, a lot of people have businesses. That's why they are on Fiverr. And they want to know if they have the copyrights to use it. Or if they have to keep paying you after X amount of years or X amount of time that they send. Um, this is just reviews. I haven't been on here very long because I don't have very many. But it is nice to get them. So once I decided what niche I wanted to go into, what gig I wanted to make, I, before I even opened up a Fiverr account, wanted to know any tips and tricks from people who had been working in Fiverr. So I went on to Spotify, just typed in Fiverr, and then listened to a bunch of podcasts. I also listened to YouTube videos about Fiverr, kind of like what you're doing now, and overall just got a bunch of tips and advice from people who have been doing it, who had tried it out. For some people it worked really well, for other people it didn't work at all and it was a waste of their time. Overall, I wanted to get a bunch of opinions just so I knew what I was walking into and that way I could get the best possible foot first before. One of the podcasts that I really enjoyed listening to was called Freelance Fairy Tales. It is a woman, I'm going to put her name so I'm just going to put it here. But she has been on Fiverr. She is a copy editor. She now has a multi-bazillion dollar business. It's like six, seven figure business. All based on her starting on Fiverr. She now freelances and hires other freelancers to help with her workload. And overall, it she just gave really good advice. Um, as she said a bunch of times, she's not paid by Fiverr. If anything, she probably thinks Fiverr would like her to be quiet. But she gave really, really good advice that ended up working well for me. And now I'm going to share them with you. But if you want more advice on Fiverr or if you're really into podcasts instead of listening to my voice, um, she has them, Freelance Fairy Tale, that's on Spotify, Apple, all of the things, I believe. Um, but one of them was the most important thing of Fiverr or getting started on Fiverr is to get reviews. When someone orders for your gig, Fiverr in their algorithm says, hey, people like this, send it to more people, and then more people in turn should buy it. So that's what you really need is to get the momentum as soon as you open. So one of the things that she recommends on her podcast 
is whenever you make your first gig, get a family member, a friend, someone in your life to buy that gig. You're, of course, going to make whatever they order, send it out, complete the order, and then they leave you a five-star review. That helps you get the momentum of starting on Fiverr, and it helps the algorithm pick you up and then show you to more people. I definitely don't suggest you doing it more than once. Just do it for the one gig, one person, and then if it's good, it will be sent to the algorithm, and then more people, real buyers, will see it and buy it and give you more reviews, and then you can just keep it going from there. Another thing that you may have noticed in my gig is that I actually use a photo of myself in part of the thumbnail of my thing. It is just more personal. People connect with other people. And for you to show your face, I totally understand if you're not comfortable with it. But if you are, it is super helpful. Also, if you can make a video, videos are just more personal. They can hear your voice. They can get your personality. Overall, it just helps with that connection that sometimes we can lose being just in front of a screen buying from just kind of someone in the abyss. So using your photo or even getting a video if you're comfortable with that is helpful. I've noticed a lot more people will comment saying like, oh, I love that I actually know what you look like. Or your copy in how you described your gigs. I can get your personality more. So just keeping that in mind, it's super helpful. It helps bridge that gap where kind of screens have made their way. Okay, so first things first, we are going to do some research on Fiverr. So we're going to grab our computers and we're going to go onto Fiverr just to research what kind of gigs. Already you should kind of have an idea of what you want to start doing. So this is the part where you're going to research and see if one, if it's an oversaturated market or two, the opposite side, no one's looking for it. And maybe you should start thinking of maybe a different gig or something else that you can do. If no one is searching for it, that means the likelihood of you being able to make money is kind of low. I don't want to dismiss you from doing it. If you're finding enough work, definitely try and go ahead and do it. But doing this research ahead of time is super helpful for you to get an idea of pricing, what the average is, and also just the quality of work that you're going to be put into competition with. This is the part that being very brutally honest with yourself is going to benefit you way more than hurt you. So Look at this with a an very analytical mind. I know as an artist that can kind of be hard sometimes, but this is the part of research that is super helpful and very important to get started on the right foot. So here is once you have made an account, all of those things, this is going to be your dashboard when you go from switching to buyer to switching to seller. This is your dashboard. This, I'll just walk through this one little part for you. It's kind of self-explanatory. That is what I love about Fiverr. Their app and their website are very intuitive. It's not hard to figure out how it all works, but I'm just going to go through real quick just so you can see. Um, it'll have your username. These are the things that you're actually rated on. So order completion, delivery time, order response rate, inbox time, and inbox response rate. The quicker that you can reply to messages. That's why having the app on your phone is super helpful. And also having completed orders. You don't have orders going out late or orders canceling, anything like that, because all of that will drastically affect where you're ranked at in Fiverr. Fiverr only wants to promote their professional sellers that are getting orders out on time. They're responding in a timely manner, all of those things. So I have found personally that having the app and just checking on the app is super helpful. There's also personal, there's also buyers that prefer to order from someone who is online at the time that they are looking. So having the app and just kind of having it open in the background, just looking at it maybe once, twice, three times tops in a day. Having the app on your phone is super helpful. You can just check in every now and then. It also helps with the algorithm because it'll say that you're online because you have the app. There's a lot of buyers that prefer to order from people who are online at the same time as them. Since Fiverr is a global network, there are certain people that will be literally on the other side of the world. So they'll be sleeping when you're awake. Some buyers prefer to work with sellers that are in 
at least the same side of the world as them. So they kind of have a close enough time zone that they're not sending you replies about revisions and then that while they're sleeping, you're then replying to those. They It's a faster way of working. Don't get me wrong, I've definitely worked with people in Australia. Most of my clients actually have been in Australia, and I'm in America. So our responses literally are 24-hour difference. But just throwing it out there, there are buyers that do like to work with people in the same continent or even the same time zone as them. So having the app and showing that you're online when they're awake can help you get more orders. So going up here, you have the dashboard. This is what all this is. You have your messages for privacy reasons. I'm not going to go through this just because I don't have permission from my clients to show their messages. I have no open orders, so I will show you just this. Um, priority, which means just your open orders, active, late, delivered, completed. So I've completed 12. I started in December of 2021. Now, as of recording this, it's June. Um, I've had no canceled orders and I haven't started any because I have no open ones. This is where you can see your gigs, just the impressions, clicks, and orders of those gigs. This is just in the last 30 days. I can do the last six months and you can see, particularly on orders, what my most popular is. Um, I already, I've already shown you this one. It's the making a seamless pattern. Then I have creating an illustrated book cover. I do get a lot of impressions and clicks. I've never gotten any orders. That will happen. Sometimes you will have gigs that never sell and then you'll have other gigs that are your most popular and people buy them all the time. Next, this gig was actually created after I started getting orders about the seamless pattern. I was getting artists that wanted to maybe make tissue paper or wrapping paper for their orders using their artwork, but they don't know how to make seamless patterns. So I created a create patterns with the original artwork. I've gotten, I've gotten two orders from that. I don't know why it says zero, but that's fine. Um, it is my third most viewed gig and it's super helpful if I do get a message saying like hey I'm an artist I already have the work created but could you make a pattern I can easily send this to them it was already been made and it's great the next one I actually just got an order on this and finished it uh, this is an avatar illustration in YouTube for YouTube Twitch and podcast um, you will see a lot of it particularly on podcast it will be just a cartoon illustration of the speaker. If a person is not like as comfortable having just their photo, they would rather have a cartoon illustration. This is where you or I would come in. Um, there's a lot of companies now that instead of having an actual photo of their employees on their website, they'll have illustrated cartoons of each employee. That way it does keep a little bit of privacy and it's also just cute and fun, and if that's their branding, it works really well. This is the, probably the only gig I've actually gotten illustration work from. The other one clearly would be the book cover, but since I haven't gotten an order, I don't really have anything to say towards that. Um, you can go through your analytics. You can see I got one sale, I think. Yes, one sale the very first month that I started, and then we can go to 2022. And you can see there are lulls, there are highs. Sometimes I get a lot of orders all at once, other times not so much. It really just depends on how Fiverr's algorithm is working when you're pushed up to the top or when you're not. Making more gigs, being more active on Fiverr always helps with the algorithm and showing that you're active and you're serious about being on here. You can see my total sales for 2022, which was 284, and then I made the $8 in December. I've had no cancellations, uh, 11 completed, and then no new orders because I finished all of them. Um, going back, you can go to earnings, and here you can see I have certain things that are clearing, certain things that are not, and have already cleared. So I've made a total of $300.80. 
in these last six months. Um, the way you can withdraw with Fiverr is either through a PayPal account, a Fiverr Renew credit card, or direct deposit. Their direct deposit is through a third company. I've personally had no issues with it. It isn't immediate, so if you need the money right away, it's not really going to work that way. It does take some time. I personally like their direct deposit. You can use PayPal if you like. I have just prefer this method of doing it. Um, you can go to their communities. They have events, blogs, forums, community standards, and podcasts if you have questions. Sometimes going to the actual company and just learning from them is the best way to do it. You can get tips and tricks and all of those things. Or also just learning from other Fiverr sellers. Even if they aren't in your niche, they can probably still give you some really good information about just how to get discovered. That's how I started, was just listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos about Fiverr, getting to know Fiverr, and how it all works. Every platform is totally different, so learning it, how it works, how to get noticed is super important in getting that first step and that right foot. If you found this video useful, I have a bunch more videos about service pattern design, also websites, and anything else just running a creative business. Please like and subscribe for more, and I will see you next week.